that you discovered Destiny's Child? I I don't like to take <laughs> the full credit. Okay. Uh, uh, but in a roundabout way, yeah, that's one of the stories that I'll tell in the book. It's really a great story. Uh, uh, my relatives on my on my son's side, my oldest daughter's side, actually found him. Hey, we got these little girls. I'll give you the short version. We got these little girls. You got to see them. So they sent me like a videotape. Back then it was a VHS tape. Mm. And they sent me a tape. I go, wow, these little girls are incredible. They were dancing. They were singing. And so I flew to Houston to see them. And I, you know, got a hotel room just so they could come up and audition. And I took my video camera. I was like, wow, they're really incredible. I think at the time they may have been, I don't know, 13, 14, okay. maybe. I can't remember. And so I signed them to my production company. Uh, at the time, they were called Girls' Time. And Matthew, Beyonce's dad, managed them. And I brought them to Atlanta. And I changed their name to The Dolls because they were so cute. They remind <laughs> me of little dolls. So I named them I, I, I named them The Dolls. And they were under the production company for, oh, two and a half, maybe three years. You know, tried to get a record deal, tried to get a record deal. Had auditions, had showcases. And finally, Sylvia Rome loved them. She flew down from New York and she loved them. And so I did a deal with Electra. And I can be honest that at the time, I wasn't, not that I'm a savvy businessman now, I was really just a producer and writer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't handle the situation well. I didn't have enough under my belt. You know what I mean? And so long story short, me and Matthew, we butted heads. We couldn't decide on this, decide on that. And, you know, they moved on from me and ended up going to, of course, Columbia at the time. And uh, the rest is history. Wow. So but they're, they're like daughters to me. I actually met with Beyonce when she was pregnant with her first child. Uh, she goes, hey, I'm doing a documentary. And I know you probably got some pictures and video. I said, yeah, I've been holding it for you. She goes, will you come, <laughs> she goes, will you come to New York? And I said, absolutely. So she, she flew me to New York and my engineer had transferred all the video onto you know, the computer on a hard drive. And so she said, we had a lot of stuff, but it, it melted in storage. Oh. So nobody has any footage of me when I was little. I said, well, I got all that footage that we did in the basement rehearsing at my house and the showcase that they did. And, uh, and ironically, when we did the showcase, nobody liked them. Nobody liked them. I was so disappointed. I was so hurt. I had spent so much money, outfits and staging and hair and all that stuff. And I had this big showcase and nobody liked them. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that. You know, and at the time you got to remember it was hat to the back, baggy clothes, crisscross, mm -hmm. TLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these girls were beautiful. They were, they had sexy clothes on it. Oh, those little girls are too sexy. They're, they shouldn't be wearing that stuff. <laughs> Not really, but I knew Beyonce was a star. She could sing. So I signed them and said, this kid can sing. She's incredible to be that young. So I had the showcase. And nobody liked them. Clive Davis didn't like them. Wow. Puffy didn't like them. Wow. Kenny didn't like them. Oh, goodness. Uh, Gerald Busby liked them, but I couldn't put a good enough deal together with Gerald Busby at Motown. And then finally, Sylvia liked them. But anyway, yeah. uh, the edited version is they ended up leaving me and I met with Beyonce. We sat there for four hours and I played all this video and showed these pictures. She was in tears and couldn't believe it. And, we had a really good talk. And I told her a lot of the things that, you know, were, that were going on when they were kids. And, and, you know, we just didn't. And I ended up talking to Matthew as well. We, we really should have worked together better. But, you know, I wanted to be the boss and he was the boss of the girls. So we were just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> neither one of us wanted to release our reins as being the boss. And, yeah. you know, looking back on it, we really should have been uh, really more business minded, but I didn't have that business sense back then. You know, I was a songwriter, I was a producer. And so uh, they left. And I think that it happened. I told her, I said, it happened how it was supposed to happen. I said, if I was the stepping stone, then okay, if that's what I was to the girls, okay, because I was happy for them. I was really happy for them because they deserved to. They were talented. I signed them. That's why I signed them. So I never was bitter. I even told her when they had their fallout and all the girls were getting fired or they were getting rid of girls, 
people were calling me, Five Magazine, Rolling Stone, and I wouldn't do one interview because I said, well, no, I'm not going to throw any dirt on it. I said, I'm happy for the girl. So I don't, well, we know they were with you when they were little. I go, yeah, but I don't have any dirt for you. So no, thank you. I don't want to, I don't want And I told her that. She said she appreciated it. And so, I, I mean, I, I love them. I love her. She's phenomenal. Uh, and that's, that was my dealing with them. So I don't take the credit that I discovered them. I say I was a stepping stone, yeah. you know, and I endorsed them. And when Columbia called me and said, hey, we're thinking about signing them. We know they're, they were with you. Is there something we need to know? I said, no. I said, they're talented. I said, sign them. And I told Beyonce, I said, I didn't think you were going to blow up like that. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I was, I was very happy for them. And she said she remembers all the meetings, all the pep talks I used to have with them. She mm. said, I remember everything you used to say. She said, you're gonna, you have to give up your fame. You have to give up your life. And she was mm. telling me she wishes she could go to the mall and shop normally. She wishes she could take her nephews to the beach. She can't go nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I said, wow, I just never thought that was going to happen in that way. And she goes, oh, I remember all those meetings you had. You would tell us all that stuff. You know, so they were around Usher. They were around TLC, Monica. They were around all these other people that we were working with. So they adapted the old school work ethic. That's why she's where she is, because she comes from an old school work ethic. Mm. She works hard on music. And then she, like, like us, she was, okay, I did that. How can I outdo that? So she adapted that mentality like we did. Okay, yeah, that's a cool song, but we got to write something better than that. You ne- never, never, never being satisfied. Wow. You know, it's not about money. About yeah. can I do it again? Let me see if I can top what I did do. And she comes from that. Her and Usher come from that, uh, from that mold of being around us when they were 12, 13 years old. Mm. You know, so I'm so, like I said, I'm so proud of her. You know what I mean? Very proud. Very, very proud of that girl. So I told her, you know, we sat for like four hours just talking, looking at pictures and old video. They were in my basement rehearsing. And she used a couple of pieces in her documentary wow. uh, that she did. And she gave me credit. Somebody told me, I didn't even know. She gave me a video <laughs> credit because I, you know, I gave her the footage. So it's a great story. But there's yeah. no so much more in between mm. that I want to say for the book. Yeah, no, but yeah, no. and to honest, I I spent an hour interviewing Matthew, and he is a strong personality. <laughs> yeah, 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 he, he, yeah, he is. He he did he did a he did a great. Like I said, you have to give people like him, Joe Jackson, yeah, uh, you know, Brandy Norwood's mom. You have to give those momagers and managers because they identified the talent. They identified yeah. that their kid was talented. So give yeah. him that credit. Yeah. Give Ike Turner the credit. Give him that credit. Yeah, he was crazy. But give him, <laughs> give him that credit for knowing and seeing what he saw to push them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Now, what happens after that? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I ain't got to do with that. Yeah, but I, I do say give them that credit for having that vision when their kid was uh, when their kid was young. You know what I mean. So yeah, happen how it's supposed to happen, man. I, I yeah. always believe that. I was blessed beyond my wildest dreams. And so it happened the way it was supposed to happen. I was never bitter because I was doing well myself. And mm. so I was like, okay, well, I missed, I missed on that. It's okay. I'm yeah. okay. Now, if I never did anything, hell, I'd probably be done jumped off a bridge or something, <laughs> or something you know, yeah, yeah, the, you know kicking be, myself. Yeah. But, uh, I was, I was okay and had done okay. And I've done okay in my life. I'm satisfied for what I've done. And, and I am a believer that it happens the way that it's supposed to happen. Yeah. You know, that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. But yeah, that's my Destiny's Child story. <laughs> well, I think the thing, because I, I think after spending, you know, almost an hour and a half with you last time and, and knowing that you, um, your approach to, you know, th- this is my my lane and I'm not, I don't want you to step out. I can imagine the pressures of trying to become like, oh, let me do what L.A. Reid's doing now because, you exactly. know, it is, and, yeah. and, and not yeah, knowing. Absolutely. To- but I wasn't ready. Mm. I didn't have the knowledge. And the mistake I made too was not calling on him and Kenny because I, w- I wanted to do it on my own. I wanted to show them that I could do it, you know? And so what came out of it was them saying, you have an eye for talent. You identified her. You identified that kid that she was a star. And I said, yeah, I know talent. And I didn't quite know how to develop it mm. and get it to that level like they did at LaFace but I could identify talent, you know what I mean? So 
you know, like I said, just didn't have that experience. And, you know, hindsight is what it is. Like they say, if I could do all over again, I would have, I would have leaned on them, but I wanted them to be proud of me for doing it on my own. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, well, so Kenny, Kenny did the way to take sail on his own and, and stuff. So I exactly. can imagine. Yeah, there you go. You know, and so that was my premise for it. I got to do it. I wanted to be successful, but, you know, I just, I didn't have the experience, you know, at the time, you know, and I, I couldn't let go of it. I should have let go and said, hey, I do need help, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. so, but it, like I said, uh, they ended up being successful, which was, which was great. They have, they have and Beyonce, of course, doing what she's doing. And Kelly is great. You know, so yeah, they're like daughters to me when I see them. You know, they yeah. were, they were well, young, and, the, and the fact they that you can still have a relationship because you know, so many of these uh, artists would say, "Now nah, he did us dirty. He took a, you know, he signed no. us with this luck." And so that's that's always yeah. the to you. No, your she, I was I was I was glad to hear her say she remembered all the meetings and the things that I told them when they were young. I appreciated it. She appreciated that I held on to this uh, footage and photos yeah. just for her because I knew she'd call one day. Wow. And, uh, so yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll just save it for her. She'll call me. Yeah. So we sat there and we, we we went through a lot of things that occurred personally, you know, because they were young, man. They were young. They were they were they were thirteen years old, fourteen years old. Wow. They were young. And ironically, when they finally came out and hit, they hit because they were young and sexy. The mm -hmm. thing that I tried to do. So I always say they were. I was a little ahead of the time, you know, because once hat to the back and the baggy clothes played out. And they came on, it was like, wow. Uh, you know what I mean? It had yeah. it had changed by that time. I said, Well, that's what I tried to do. And everybody said <laughs> they were too sexy. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So hey, it it, it it happens the way it's supposed to happen. You know, yeah. it's a good story. Like I said, it's a really good story. So it, cool. This is Beyonce. Now tell me about getting over the stage right. I mean, how did this go from having fun and singing for a few people to where I mean, you're going to go out there and you're going to try to make it big. Well, <laughs> I guess if we keep on practicing and practicing and we keep on performing, every time we get better and the stage fright just fades away. Fades away. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.